All right, folks, it appears that we are live uh, today. Uh, it is April 19, 2023, and welcome to another episode of Toss and Talks. Uh, it's a series in which we basically bring information from the city to all the residents in the greater community of the Southwest to let them know what's going on in our city of Tolleson. So uh, a couple of announcements before we begin. Uh, at different points of the presentations, whether it's mine or one of the presenters, uh, you may have questions about the information being presented, the programs, contact information, what have you. Uh, we are using Zoom. So you, the Zoom platform uses the chat option. So uh, to be able to contact us or send us questions, just hit the chat option. And then what I will do is, as the questions come in, I'll either read them aloud and send them to the to the right person to answer, or we'll store them off to the side. And then when the when we have a gap in a presentation, we'll go ahead and answer them at that time. Uh, and if we don't have an answer, then what we'll do is we'll send that chat option to the right department head so they can research it and get you an answer and then follow up uh, at a later, later day. All right. Um, so part of the part of uh, the, the toss and talks, we have a, a mini series, I guess you can call it that. I'm thinking Netflix right now. Um, but we have basically an episode within an episode. And the episode is called The Taste of Tolleson. And what we basically do is go out into the community and we find an eatery or a, a little market or a neveria, something that provides uh, something really good to eat for our community members. And we, we highlight them. We visit them at their location and talk a little bit about what they have to offer and what they're all about. So we will be having a talks and talks today as well. Uh, but we'll, we'll uh, focus on that uh, later on today. And this was going to be on uh, Carniceria Rodeo, which is a real popular carniceria in downtown Tolleson. And um, there's going to be some gift certificates available at the time. We'll give you instructions on how to uh, get yourself registered so that you can potentially win yourself a gift certificate. And then, um, and uh, so we want to make sure that we uh, we do that as well. So um, the last thing is uh, is really getting into the the, the nooks and crannies of this particular policy and talks. Every episode has a different. Uh, formatting priority and you know here we are in April literally five weeks away from the kids getting out of school uh, and so it's an exciting time and it's a very nervous time because people are wondering okay my kid's not going to be at school but I still got to go to work you know what are, what am I going to do with them uh, or I'll, you know some format of that question running through parents minds right now and so we have our experts here in the city of Tolleson that are that are going to present different options that are going to be available to uh, kids of different ages throughout the entire summer and um, and how to go about registering them and locations and all that other fun stuff. So <laughs> before we get into that, I do want to introduce my uh, my co-presenter. This this uh, episode's co-presenter is actually uh, Councilwoman Corinda Rives. Corinda, if you want to say hi to everybody. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hello, everyone. Okay. So I thought uh, Corina would be appropriate for this one for a couple of reasons. Um, one is because she's a, she's a teacher by profession, and uh, she also leads our reading program. And so she's very much involved uh, with the library, and, uh, and I thought she would be a really good resource to have here, and especially considering that she works with a lot of the kids at the school that may, partic that may be uh, participating in a summer program. So she's going to help me uh, co-present a number of folks. And so I think... Um, are we, we're doing library first? Yes. Okay. So, Corina, if you can, um, I can, if you can introduce Lila and Laura, Laura uh, to, to, the, to the community, that way everybody can uh, get to know who they are, and then you guys can run off with your presentation on the summer programs in our city of Tolson Library. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as a teacher, the library is very dear to my heart. Um, uh, Books, 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 so many books and opportunities to read. Um, reading for me should always take you to a different place, a different uh, time era, um, different accents because you go to different places. Um, the library, um, bringing, raising my two daughters in, in, in the community, um, I look at our panelists and Francis was one of the um, workers at the library at the time that my two girls were growing up and we would come to the library for the summer reading program or just reading in general. So today is extra special because we get to talk about, you know, a fabulous topic. And I'm looking at um, these experts that are definitely um, a field 
you know, have this all um, in their pockets and in their hearts. I get the opportunity to read and work with Miss Lila with the with the reading program. We do a um, story time once a month at the end. Um, so I think it's May 1st is our next one. Correct, Miss Lila? And I, um, at the time when everyone was uh, at home, we were doing it virtual, but it feels so good to be able to come back to the library to in person and do some in person reading. Um, and again, I think we say that so excited about being able to offer all of these programs because we really haven't had a chance, you know, um, to be in person. So tonight's going to be extra special. So parents, grab a pencil and a pen so that you can write down, jot down all these programs that we have available. Um, and I'm going to um, let the ladies from the library take over and talk about all these fantastic programs that are available to not only our children, our teens, and um, our adults. So I'm, I have a book club that I joined with um, our library too. So definitely adults. Miss Lila, Miss Miss Laura. The floor is yours, ladies. Lila and Laura. I just wanted to say thank you so much for having us. We're very excited to bring people back into the library um, at our beautiful brand new building. So we're so proud of it and we're going to be uh, raring to go. So I want to pass it over to Lila. She is our library um, coordinator. She hands, handles all of our programming and does an amazing job with it. So um, she's our expert and she has worked very hard to make a super awesome program for everyone this year. And we're all very excited about it. So thank you, Lila. Thank you, Laura. Good evening, everyone. Um, I do have some slides. I don't know if you want to load those. Okay, great. Okay. So our summer reading program um, here at Tellison Public Library has a few different ways to participate. Um, so you can go online. There's a website that is created every year through a national organization called the Collaborative Summer Library Program. And they choose a theme and they provide us with a uh, website that all of the regional libraries in the state use actually, um, where you can earn prizes by tracking any reading that you do or any kind of educational activity that you participate in. There are special streaming events that are on that website, as well as um, kind of secret challenges and secret codes that kids get to make their own avatars. Um, it's also an all ages program. So um, anyone can participate in that. And it's a really great way to, um, to earn some incentives. And in just a few minutes, I'll go over some prizes that you uh, can earn. In person at the library, um, we are going to have a full schedule, as uh, Laura mentioned, of in-person programming, which we're excited about. Um, we were doing virtual for a few years due to the pandemic, but we're very excited to be back with a full schedule in person. So we are going to be having special performances, um, traditional story times, special early literacy programs, um, what we call kids clubs, and I'm gonna get into those in a minute. Um, and we're going to be having a movie. Another thing that I want to mention is that we will be um, partnering with the Human Services Department in the Tullison Civic Center and using their cafeteria to provide free lunch for the community every Monday through Friday. Um, that's open to everyone in the community, and that's going to be available through the Summer Food Service Program. So we'll be making sure that everyone has a nutritious meal every day this summer as well. And you can go ahead and go to the next slide. Perfect, thank you. Okay, um, so this is an overview of some of the prizes that people can earn by tracking their points. So if they go to that website that I mentioned, uh, maricopacountyreads.org, they will be able to access all of the special kind of digital stuff on there, uh, but they will also be able to earn prizes. So every minute that you spend reading or participating in one of our programs, or if uh, a child isn't to the age of reading yet being read to, or you know, doing alphabet songs, anything like that, any reading counts. Um, so when I was a kid, we used to be able to earn like those little personal pizzas, you know, from Pizza Hut. <laughs> um, it's, th that program is alive and well. So uh, the kids are actually able to earn free pizzas uh, from Peter Piper Pizza. You can earn food from Rubio's, Raising Cane's, um, a day pass to the Arizona State Park System, which is a really great partnership. Um, free tickets to um, WNBA Phoenix Mercury Games and a free book. Um, they have a really great marketplace of really popular titles available for all ages, including Spanish language options. Um, and then you select your book and it gets shipped to the library and you can come pick it up with all of your other prizes at the end of the summer. 
There are also prize drawings for anyone who participates in that online program. Um, so there are child's play theater tickets. There's a prize bundle um, from the Musical Instrument Museum, a Harkins prize pack, which is free movie tickets and the, the big refillable cups, as well as a grand prize drawing um, for Legoland and Sea Life Aquarium. And anyone who participates in the program is automatically entered into that, um, into that, those prize drawings by creating your free account on the website. And can we go to the next slide? Great, okay, so here's an overview of what is happening in the library. Um, so the theme this year is all together now, and we are focusing very much on collaboration and on teamwork. So we're going to continue on Mondays with our early literacy programs, which are for pre-readers, kids zero to five. So we will be providing a virtual story time um, for families that for whatever reason are able to come into the library for in-person program um, or just don't feel comfortable yet coming to an in-person program. So we will have a virtual story time for them called Ollie's Book Buddies that is focusing on school readiness skills. I'm also gonna be continuing the baby time program which is for kids zero to two, which is uh, play-based and is about brain development. We're also gonna be doing tech times for um, adults and seniors for basic computer skills on that day. On Tuesdays, we're gonna be doing our special performers. So we're bringing in a magician. We're bringing in Keith Johnson, who specializes in African and Caribbean music. Um, we're gonna be having some live animal programs, uh, including from the Wildlife World Zoo, uh, children's theater, as well as some STEM uh, shows. On Wednesdays and Thursdays, we do, um, Programs for kids from the age of three to seven, a different program for kids eight and older. And then this year, we're very excited. We're actually starting some teen clubs for kids 13 and older now. Um, so we're gonna have something happening for each age range um, in the library every Wednesday and Thursday. So for the little kids, we're going to be doing um, some dance parties. We have some puppet shows coming in. We're going to be doing um, kids yoga and mindfulness. We're also gonna be doing traditional story times as well as some STEM and some art. For the older kids, they get to choose whatever activity they're doing that day um, based on their interest. So when they show up, they get to choose between art, robotics, we're gonna have Lego available, um, coding, which is basic computer skills, um, STEM with the Arizona Science Center, as well as cooking once a week and uh, board games. For the older kids, we are starting a new program this summer, which is going to be a newsletter where they actually get to go around the library and kind of visit what the other younger kids are doing, take pictures of it, do book reviews, kind of give an overview of what's happening in the library, as well as provide their own kind of original art and poetry and writing. So we're excited about that new program. They'll also be doing some art projects, including designing a new uh, teen library card that the kids will get to vote on before before the summer ends. They'll be making some musical instruments. We're doing a henna workshop. They're gonna learn how to sew some puppets. We're also gonna be doing some games. Um, we're also bringing in a virtual reality field trip um, where the kids put on the virtual reality headset and they're gonna be able to visit um, different art murals in Chicago and Tucson and get an overview of how those are made and kind of take like a virtual city tour, um, which is gonna be fun. And then on Friday, we provide a movie for everyone. And can you go to the next slide? So I thought it would be a nice touch to just kind of give you um, some, some pictures <laughs> of, of the program as we did it in person before. Um, so on the top left, you will see um, our younger kids doing kind of a Zumba dance party music and movement. Um, in the center top, that is one of the kids working with a program called Bloxels that we use in Code Club where they learn how to make pixel art and simple animations. On the top right, you'll see some kids uh, participating in one of the STEM programs. Uh, bottom left, you'll see them working on um, color theory and color tones in an art club. Uh, the center bottom, you're gonna see them working on robotics. Uh, they actually engineer their own robots and then they do kind of like a battle bot tournament. And then on the uh, bottom right, you see some kids learning how to play uh, steel drums with uh, musician Keith Johnson, who we're bringing back. Uh, so we definitely try to fight learning loss in what we do. 
in the summer. It's really important, Fernanda knows all about this, um, that a lot of kids, when they're not in school, they experience learning loss because they're not really um, engaging in educational activities. So we try to fight that with what we do at the library, but we try to make everything play-based. <laughs> um, so they are definitely exploring a lot of educational um, opportunities and concepts. They're doing a lot of reading. Uh, they're, they're just not uh, necessarily knowing that they're doing all that. Learning, so <laughs> We have a lot of fun with it. Um, we're going to start rolling out the schedule for that in May. Our program is free of charge. There is limited capacity for certain clubs. Um, so we can't guarantee that a kid will get a spot in every club every day. Um, but but we, we try to keep them busy and uh, we will start rolling out schedules and registration forms for that in May. So we'll keep you posted. Thank you. And any awesome. questions anyone may have, just let me know. The only question I have is uh, you mentioned uh, Friday movies. Mm -hmm. Um, are the movies going to be indoors, like in air conditioning during the day? And yes. when you say it's open to everyone, is it open to everyone registered for the program or registered for everybody in the community? Um, so the movie is actually for anyone registered in the program, but as I said, the program is free. Um, so they're welcome to just kind of fill out a registration form. The purpose of registering people for the program is mostly for us to know our attendance and for us to kind of know where everyone is. Um, since we don't have a fee, you're welcome to, to join the program right up until the last day. And that is indoors. We're going to be using the big cafeteria multipurpose room in the human services department. And I know there'll be information on this, but if let's say, you know, a lot of our families, you know, they, they travel up to Mexico or California or other parts of the country to visit family, do they have to register for the entire summer program? Or can they do, let's say, you know, I'm going to be here for three weeks and then I'm going to be gone a week and then come back for another week or so. Can they do incremental registration? Yes, absolutely. So ours is really flexible. Um, so pretty much our registration form is just letting us know um, the age of the person who's participating, the name, emergency contact information, and just basic kind of permission. Like I give my kid permission to use scissors. I give them permission to watch, you know, a PG rated movie. Um, so it's mostly just a general sign off. It's not really for us to, um, we don't have any type of curriculum. And um, like I said, the programming is very flexible. So someone can participate in the program for one week, or they might be with us every every day during the summer for the full nine weeks. Lila, the, the biggest thing I want to remember from all this is that the kids are so much involved in having fun in your program. Mm -hmm. They actually don't notice that they're learning. <laughs> and so that's good. You know, we don't, we don't want our kids to experience learning loss. And we know that happens every year during the summertime. Mm -hmm. um, but the way you put it, they're so engaged in activities mm -hmm. that not only are they not learning, uh, they, they're not experiencing learning loss, but they're gaining new knowledge in areas that they that they maybe previously didn't know. But it's so so much fun that they're right. really focused on the activity in front of them instead of you know this whole thing that sometimes kids are like ah you know this is this is another one it's might as well have gone to summer school. Right, oh, it's summer. Cool. We want it to feel like summer. You know, we want it to feel like fun. And I think the robotics program is a good example of that. Um, the kids actually spend a lot of time reading those instructions and they spend a lot of time doing the reading, but they're so engaged in trying to make a robot that's going to kind of like win their tournament, you know, that, that they're, they just, they can't get enough. So, and we give them a lot of autonomy. We see a lot of kids working on skills. Um, we let them kind of set their own rules for their tournament. You know, we see them with a growth mindset of like, whatever I didn't work on today, whatever didn't work, you know, tomorrow, I really got to make that propeller stronger. I really got to work on my wheels tomorrow. Um, so we see a lot of, a lot of uh, the skills that we're trying to build uh, in a way that is uh, very engaging, as you said. Awesome. This might inspire them to become that as a, you know, as a career. And so possible, you know, we might have the future, you know, robots within, within Tolleson, you know, that's so awesome. Thank you, Ms. Lila. Thanks. Laura, Lila, thank you very much. It sounds like the library is going to have an amazing summer. I like the pictures from the previous years when we used to get together, but I particularly uh, am looking forward to the pictures now that we're able to come back together as a team and participate with our kids in a writing facility and the excitement that comes along with that. So thank you both for your presentation. <coughs> okay, before we move on though, um, I did I did want to come back and circle back with Corina. Corina, how long have you been on council? Mayor, I was uh, elected back in 2009. So 2009, it's been, okay. So it's, it's, been it's, a few years. it's been a while, it's been a good decade. So yes. thank you for your service. Yes. I know I know you love serving the people of, of Tolleson. Uh, and you also sit on the CDAC board. 
So I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about CDAC and, you, and what you do there on behalf of our citizens. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, um, CDAC is, is one of the boards that I sit on, um, I serve and represent our city of Tolleson, um, along with other, other cities within the West Valley. So we have Buckeye, we have Youngtown, we have um, some other cities that are on the West side. And so they're uh, um, bringing up proposals, proposals to, um, to be voted on upon to, for projects. Some like in Youngtown, they're voting for sidewalks. So in their community, they don't have enough sidewalks for pedestrians to walk through certain areas or it's not safe or someone with a wheelchair, like my mom was in a wheelchair, you know, to me, getting her access to all places is important. So, you know, that's one of them. They applied for it. We'll see if they um, get approved. We vote on it together. Um, the town of Guadalupe is another community. They had some sewer issues and they needed some support. So they were writing for some grants to see if they could get funded. Um, here in Tolleson, we were uh, funded last year 100% with our project, and that is to help homes. So you might have a home where someone lives um, and maybe they need like a handicap accessible bathroom. Maybe the bathroom is, a, you know, struggle and it could be a safety issue with slippering and, you know, all those things. So they'll install like a handrail or make it, you know, handicap kept accessible with, the, with a, a ramp or something like that. So um, we worked with the housing department to see which homes would qualify, which homes were in need. We Then the um, housing department made a video of, of the people who had received some of the services and thanking um, what a difference, you know, something can make where, you know, the door now it's secure. She can sleep a little better because she's not worried about them breaking in. Um, she goes to the, take a shower. She feels safe because she's able to hold on and she's not, you know, you know, fearful of getting hurt or injured. Um, when you hear those stories, those are exactly why I became a councilwoman because I want to make sure that my community, um, has all the opportunities, um, possible, right. Available to them. So that's just one of the boards um, that I serve um, as a councilwoman for the city of Tolleson. I'm also on the police and fire board. I'm also on um, the community grants. We just met yesterday for that one. Um, but a brand new program is our uh, sister cities program. So be out on the lookout for that one. Um, that one is with the city of Puerto Peñasco um, down in Mexico. So amazing opportunity to integrate our both communities um, and bring some opportunities for our, for our community. Well, Clorinda, council member, uh, thank you for, for your service. Thank you for doing all that. And I think it's important that the community knows that um, as council members, we are continual advocates. Mm -hmm. And even when it comes to sitting down with our West Valley partners, it's important that, you know, we're able to go into a meeting and know what our priorities are and then go in there and fight for them yes. um, as you're doing on CDAC. So uh, thank you for doing that. And, um, and thank you for sharing. Yes. Um, but now I'm going to ask you if you can uh, introduce... Uh, Another young gentleman uh, in this meeting, his name is Nairo Horacio, younger than Horacio, his name is John Paul. But uh, if you can introduce John Paul and the Parks and Recreation team, uh, we'd really appreciate it because I know they got a lot of opportunities this summer as well. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm going to um, introduce John Paul Lopez, but I also want to follow back on, we just celebrated Whoopi Days. And John Paul um, and his team did an outstanding job with Whoopi Days. Um, I live in Tolleson, I work in Tolleson, and this weekend I got to play in Tolleson from the parade to um, the, with the library program had a, a, the Lia Los Niños in there. We had Go carnival, we had music, we had dancing. Um, and to see all of our community members, again, after so many years, not being able to hug and, and reunite and just share that love of community. Um, so without further ado, here's the person who brought all Whoopi Days together and is going to springboard us into our Parks and Rec. What's happening this summer? I introduce John Paul Lopez. Thank you, Mayor and Councilman. Right. This, this is a, a, an honor to be working over at Tallis in a place where I grew up as well. And so we, we love being able to provide our community with all the benefits that we, we provide the services and everything that we can for our community and our members of Tolleson. So it's great. I'm going to pass it all over to our great coordinators who have a facet in every part of the, the Parks and Rec Department who I cannot do any of the special events or any programming without these people. So they're going to take on their perspective areas of the of the um, coordination of the, each area, except for team council, because team council is actually in a meeting today. And Ruben, our coordinator for team council, is in there, so I'll cover his area. But I'm going to pass this on over to Gabby Molina, who's in charge of our recreation program. So, if, Nico, if you could start our presentation, that'd be great. Oh, 
Awesome. At our summer rec program, thank you, John Paul, for passing it over. Here we are on our first slide. So if we can go on to the next one already and get into it. So what I end up looking forward to, and I'm planning a lot of, is working with our team. Our summer at the rec. We this is going to be for our first, our future first to sixth graders. So this is for our kids that are currently kindergartens going to go into first grade in this fall, which is not so much fall because it's August, but we know where we're heading. And then our fifth graders that are going to be sixth graders later this year. This program is going to be running from May 30th to July 28th. So that is the Tuesday after Memorial Day till the Friday before they start school. So they start school kind of at a midpoint. Our local tolls and schools will be ending the Friday just before. We will have programming here at the Parks and Rec building for our seventh and eighth graders, but John Paul will cover that a little bit later in our teen programming. For our residents, we are gonna be having it as a price point of $15 per week, and our non-residents is gonna be $25 per week. So if we need to calculate that out, it's gonna be 135 for the summer for our residents and 225 for our non-residents. And then right now, registration is open. It does look closed. If you go into our, into our Civic Rec on our website and you have your account, it is going to tell you that registration for this program is currently closed. It is not. Well, the way we are processing our registration currently is by a wait list. And for us to create that wait list, we unfortunately need to make it look like it's closed. But I promise you it's not closed. Join our wait list. We're constantly going through it and pulling people off and adding to our program. And then if we can head over to our next slide so we can see what a day in the program looks like. So our program runs from 7.30 in the morning till 6 p.m. So we are here ready for you guys to go, here for the kids, ready for you to be at work and them fed and entertained and running around and learning and participating in so much stuff going on here. We have our, we will be providing our breakfast for them, lunch for them, and we will, we will have a late afternoon snack. In our areas, we have so many areas and so many things for us to do, but we have our arts and crafts room, our computer lab, our gym, our game room, a multi-purpose room, and our STEM lab. There's so many things that could be covered in these areas, even just looking at these photos to the side. If you see these two photos with that colorful wall in the background, that's our multi-purpose room. We have painting going on at one day, and then the next day we are doing science. In that activity right there, if you see me with different hair color, we're learning how to measure. We're learning about our colors. They were given a challenge to create certain colors. They had to make red or they had to make orange. They had to make green, but they also had to measure it out. So it was at a certain measurement within those test tubes. So same motivation of what's going on at the library, we're carrying on here. We're disguising their learning, letting them play it out, keeping those brains going and not, not getting too left behind. Not too left behind, hopefully none left behind, my bad but not left behind at all this summer with constant learning but how do you know that you're learning when you're having such a good time but we also have arts and crafts going on we have a little rocket being painted in this photo you see our kids having a great time in our computer lab it doesn't look like they're having a great time because that's how focused we get in there um, sometimes it's games and sometimes it's not like this summer we're going to be having our 3d printing taught throughout the summer we have 3d printers they'll learn how to use the programming to create those 3d models and make their own 3D prints. We also have an activity going on in that gym in that top right photo where we're all having fun on our little squishy seats in there. And then if we can move on over to our next slide, please. Thank you. Summer wouldn't be the same without having a million themes, getting to go through a million different experiences. So each week this summer, within this program, it's nine weeks, we're gonna be going through these themes. Our first theme, we're gonna start off strong with PopCon pop culture, every, think of those comic con conventions, those fanime expos, we have anime, we're gonna look at anime, comics, movies, shows, everything that these kids are interested in right now. We're gonna be touching on those topics and all of these themes are also gonna be building on a, um, up to a field trip or a big activity that we're gonna be doing in the building. And those we'll go over later, but so our first one we're gonna to touch on is PopCon. Following up, still in that kind of pop culture subject is gonna be May the Force Be With You. Star Wars, so we get to go to a galaxy far, far away for the sun for the week. Have a great time. Maybe we'll forge our own lightsabers. There's so much that can happen in these areas. All right, taking a step back from some pop culture and all of those references, all stars. We're going to be Tolson's all stars. We're going to get into our sports. 
all sports, any sports, sports from everywhere. We're going to have a great time. We're going to have competitions. We're going to learn new skills and maybe even learn a whole new game, a whole new sport. Then we're going to cool off the following week with our under the sea theme. It's we're at the middle of June at this point or the last week of June and we need to cool down. So we're going to go under the sea, whether we see some sponges grilling some burgers or maybe some mermaids singing some songs. We'll be exploring that. Followed by that, I was requested to say that, and if only be said this way, is Tolson's laboratory. We're becoming our scientists. We are putting on our lab coats and our goggles. We are going to be doing tests. I imagine this to be our messiest week. There's going to be explosions, and it's going to be a great time. We're going to do so much learning. They're, they won't even know what a hypothesis is, but they'll know how to make one. We will follow that up with more in the science realm, our life in pixels. So with that one, that is our deep dive into video games. We get to look into maybe how they're programmed, how we're going to, how it's really a growing job force really for these kids. And they, it's not just something that we're going to be like, oh, we need to limit our time and, but showing them the behind the scenes of it and how that those video game skills that they're creating and that they have. I don't know if you guys played against any kids recently in any kind of video game. I immediately get demolished. I cannot survive with these kids, but using those skills that they've created. And then after that, we're going to build up to our every day is a holiday, any holiday around the world. There's so many holidays, so many cultures to explore, but we get to celebrate and the whole week is going to be a party, essentially, and it will be a blast. And then looking at different cultures, we'll wrap, get almost wrapping it up the summer with around the world in five days. We have five days that week. We're going to get around the world as much as we can. We're going to go explore different cultures. We're going to learn different arts, different sports, looking at where science came from potentially in these different countries. And wrapping it up is what turned out to be a fan favorite from last year and what these photos are for. Um, from on the side was our talent show. Tolson's Got Talent. We are looking at performing arts. We had performers that were solving Rubik's Cubes in times I can't even fathom for myself. We have our staff and team performance in that bottom photo right there do, performing a song. We had full dance competitions. These kids look like they are ready to actually go onto America's Got Talent. And we're gonna be here to foster that and all of that energy. But if we can go to our next slide, please. All of these themes are building up to trips and activities. So for our PopCon, we're gonna be ending our week. We're gonna go see that brand new Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, across the Spider-Verse. I don't even know if I said it right. There are so many titles in it, but we're gonna go see that fun movie. Look at that great comic book immersion animation for our Star Wars week. We're gonna get our own galactic battle in a round of laser tag. For our All-Stars, we get to look forward to seeing a Diamondbacks game. These are all our perspective trips. We get to go swimming. We're going to visit the Science Center. We're going to have our pajama gaming day to end out our Pixel Week, where it's going to be a full, they get to experience various consoles and different gaming. We throw them back and put them in the 8-bit versions of Mario and navigate that, and that's where we win the games, everyone. We're going to be going to Great Skate after our tour around the world and then capping out the summer with that talent show that I was just going over. So all of this program is going to be for, again, those students that are currently in kindergarten going into first grade up to kids currently in fifth grade going to sixth grade. And I believe following this, I'm going to be passing this on over to Horacio to talk about our sports programming. Hi, right, how's it going? I'm Morasio Ortega, sports coordinator with the city of Tolson. I'm going to be talking about our summer recreation clinics that we're, that, that, that we're going to host. So uh, the three sports that we're, the, the three sports that we're going to offer are going to be uh, basketball, volleyball, and football. And the way our sports clinics work is that they meet once a week uh, for eight weeks. And these clinics are meant for beginner uh, participants who just want to like learn the game of basketball, learn the game of volleyball and football but also for those returning players who want to improve on those skills like dribbling, shooting, spiking, volleying, and dribbling. So uh, we kind of offer something for every skill level and every age group. Uh, so uh, registration is not open yet, but uh, make sure to check our Civic Rec website for registration and also our, all our social medias. Uh, that way uh, you know when, when it's time to register for this program. 
And I, I think uh, up next is team council. Yes, sir. And I'll take that for Ruben. Ruben is in our currently in our team council meeting. And so for our teens for seventh through eighth grade, we are we do offer programming there. A little different in, in our back room. They have their own space and the team council room back in the in the back of the rec center. They'll be offering summer activities as well from game tournaments, arts and crafts, PC and council gaming that we have there. They have really neat PC gaming councils. Uh, that are that I just don't understand and can't keep up with. And then they'll also be doing community service projects uh, throughout the summer as they do. They'll also be doing field trips throughout the, the summer and they usually do those weekly as well. They'll do those either with us or on different days on their own with the team council from movies to main event to local malls. They'll go out and, and, and do hikes and things like that. Even sometimes they scroll on over and they'll have, they want to do just like a Pete's field trip because they all craving peats for the day. <laughs> so that's one of, that's one of the, the town favorites. Um, this program is free for, for anyone from seventh through 12th grade uh, for the, the teens, but then the field trips are what cost uh, in order to go on those. And we try to keep those at a minimum uh, in cost. I do want to talk a little bit about the, the cost for both programs. Um, Mayor, and this is exciting news, the Tolleson Community Coalition, the Tolleson's um, nonprofit that we started years ago and, and is being run uh, by local residents has offered to pay for scholarships for Tolleson residents for both the, the team program and for the um, elementary age program for, for first through sixth grade. So we'll be offering those scholarships and they just have to fill out a really simple application. We're trying to make it as simple as possible. And then the Tolleson Community Coalition will reach out to those and sponsor those scholarships and, and the summer programming fees for those. So that'll that's great news. That that's awesome. Forward to join us. Yeah, it's been great. Nico, can we go on to Teen Council? The next slide. And then our Tolleson Teen Council, of course, is always uh, active and doing this. That's why they're in their meeting today. Uh, there are summer activities. We'll. we'll Piece upon this junior recreation leadership internship. And what they do is they learn skills to hold down a job. So we kind of do career development with them here at the rec, show them how they can be aides with us in the program, and then give them some of that life skills along with what they're doing in careers. And maybe they would want to come into the jobs of what we have in our recreation center just as much as we've had, because we have quite a bit of teen council members that have come through our program that actually now work for the, the city of Tolson, which is great. So it's, that's always a great opportunity. Um, along with that, they'll be doing their community service during the summer. They'll have field trips as well, uh, along with the, the seventh and eighth graders, and they kind of chaperone those as well. And then they'll do the leadership programming. And then this year, they'll be doing the leadership programming with their elected officials and a few select teams to go across and start brainstorming for next year, service projects and leadership programs they'll be leading for next year. And that will be in cohort with the JAG program along with, with our Tolson Team Council. So we're excited for those teams to be able to come up with that. And then if no one has any questions for that, we'll pass this on to Francis for our special events and what we've been doing for there for the summer. Thank you, John. All right, Nico, thank you so much for changing that slide. Hello, everyone. I would, like, uh, I would like to let you all know about a few upcoming events. Uh, as you can see here on this side, we have Family Movie Night in the Park. That will be happening next Friday, April 28th. We'll be featuring the movie Minions, The Rise of Gru. If you haven't seen this movie, you need to come out. If you've seen it, you need to come out. It's such a good movie. I'm biased. I love the Minions. So we hope you and your families will join us. Don't forget to bring your blankets and chairs. Uh, we will have a snack bar on site in case you do forget your movie favorites or if you're wanting some freshly popped popcorn because our teens, uh, council, teen council will be selling uh, concession. So we hope to see you all there. Um, our next movie in the park will be Friday, May 19th. So mark your calendars and stay tuned for that upcoming title. Um, in June and July, we'll be hosting summer bingo nights at the rec and are planning for a wet and wild movie party at the park. So be on the lookout for those flyers. Uh, we are also excited to announce our upcoming 4th of July celebration at Veterans Park. Uh, we'll have water slides for all ages, live entertainment, et cetera. We'll give you all those details actually in the June Tallest and Talk segment. So we hope to see you on there to give you some more details about those happenings. And as you've heard today, we truly do have many activities that we offer here 
at the Parks and Recreation Center throughout the year as well as summer. Uh, we are truly blessed with an amazingly talented recreation team and their enthusiasm as well as creativity they bring in order to provide these exciting programs we get to offer all those in our community. Uh, so make sure you sign up uh, to be notified of all events we have coming out for our department. So the last slide, Nico, please. Uh, we are social, so follow us on our social media platforms. Besides our website, we do upload pictures of the things we do here at the Recreation Center and out at our events. So please connect with us. If you haven't done so, register with us online with the links that are on the screen. You can screenshot this um, and we'll notify you of all the happenings and future events that we have to offer. We are looking forward to an exciting summer of fun with your children. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact our team. Um, thank you so much for allowing us to be on here. And back to you, Mayor. All right, Francis. Well, first of all, um, John Paul, thanks for answering. I did have a question about community service projects for our uh, teenagers. And you kind of touched on that on as far as developing what some of those projects may be to the future. Yeah. So <laughs> that's very important. I think um, uh, one of the things that I can remember, as a matter of fact, with John Paul, is uh, we would go down to the Andre house and we'd feed the homeless and uh, people who were having a difficult time uh, during their life. And we were able, as teenagers, to go out there and get our hands, you know, I'm not going to say dirty because we're cooking, but, you know, cutting up uh, vegetables and doing whatever we needed to do to make sure that that meal was prepared, even if it was working the lines as people uh, were coming into the building. But um, those types of experiences are, in my opinion, life changing. Uh, you know, teaching a kid the importance of giving back, I think is something that in many cases, in many, many parts of our society um, has kind of disappeared. And it's very difficult to teach that to an adult who never saw that as a child. And so for us doing that, I think uh, says a lot of things about not only the types of programs that we're trying to build, but the type of kids that we're trying to build for our community. And so, so kudos for, for being um, a group of people that project leadership that goes beyond, you know, writing a resume and interviewing skills and, you know, having a presenter go in there and, and everybody gets a, to clap, but actually get them involved in being leaders by providing a service to somebody else that may need it for, you know, that day or that week or whatever the case may be. So that's awesome. And then the other thing I wanted to mention is um, John Paul's right. Years ago, we created this uh, coalition, uh, the TCC, the Tawson Community Coalition. And at the time, you know, we were still kind of playing with the idea of creating um, a home-based nonprofit. And there's a number of nonprofits here in town, but one that I would consider a sister organization to the city whose mission really is to benefit not only to Austin residents, but to Austin residents of all the city programs. And so it's the same group that volunteers at every festivity, like they were at Whoopi Days. They help take care of a certain portion of what we do in these events, and they get the revenue from that, a portion of it. And then they go on and solicit other donations from uh, other groups and, you know, grants, and stuff like that. But it's, it's really evident from what I've seen. I've seen a number of the grants being given in our community, and, uh, and they all come back to Tolleson in some form or fashion, whether it's to the schools, whether it's to a family in immediate need. Um, I was uh, able to uh, work with them on uh, a friend of ours that had passed away. And, you know, they, they, they organized, we did car washes, we, we did, a, um, you know, a GoFundMe accounts, all the stuff. And, uh, and we were able to pay 100% of uh, their burial expenses. And it was in a very short period of time, because obviously these things happen when you least expect them. But the TCC, once again, has stepped up and is not helping us pay for some of the registration fees for some of the kids in our community that may or may not be able to afford it. But ultimately, we know they're going to be in a safe place, surrounded by great people, doing great work, uh, and, and being uh, given uh, great opportunities to grow, learn, become better individuals. And ultimately, I think as a community, that's what we want for our kids. You know, and so the TCC is dovetailing right into that mission that we all share. And so, um, Gabby. Francis, Horacio, John Paul, thank you for everything that you guys do. You guys are uh, the Bang Up Parks and Rec team. And uh, and I take special pride in Parks and Rec because that's what I do as a full-time employee for my employer. I work for the Parks and Rec department. And so I see the benefits of Parks and Recreation every single day. And so parents, if you don't know this, uh, your kids at times need to have conversations with people and they may not feel 
uh, for whatever reason, comfortable having him either with you or with, with teachers or somebody else. And sometimes they lean on the, the folks in our Parks and Recreation Center. And, uh, and you know, just know that they're, they're obviously well-intended and, and they, they are going to be um, a, good, a good voice in their ears and leading them down the right path. So please get your kids registered. A lot of opportunities, a lot. I mean, I, don't, I can't even start. If I start going over one of them, you know, special events, and I'm going to have to list all of them, but it's just nonstop action at the Parks and Recreation Center. And just to clarify, folks, the Parks and Recreation Center is not at City Hall. The library is at city, is, is in our new City Hall, which is at 9505 West Van Buren, the hard corner of 91st Avenue and uh, 9055, I'm sorry. It's on the hard corner of uh, 91st Avenue and Van Buren. But the Parks and Recreation uh, Center is actually uh, nestled inside the community uh, what's the address, guys? 9251 West Washington. 9251 West Washington. So you get to Washington off of 91st Avenue. <coughs> and I guess depending on which direction you're going, you're going to head west, and the building is right there. So it's easily accessible. But ultimately, um, if you want any more information about uh, our library program, our parks and recreation program, or for that matter, any other program that we have here, Feel free to visit our uh, city webpage. Um, they did put it on the panel, but I'm just going to, for those of you that may not have it, um, it's www.tollison.az.gov. And then if you want to learn about events, backslash events. Um, and again, Tolleson Recreation has its own, they're very alive on social media, as Francis said it. So there's continual information going on. So if you're on Facebook or what's the other ones? I only do Facebook, so. TikTok. Instagram. Yeah, all those things. Um, they're constantly uh, putting out new information. They're constantly putting out uh, pictures of activities that they've done um, just, to, just to promote the program. So uh, please uh, become part of the Tossum family, the social family, so that you're in the know and your kids get the same opportunities as everybody else. And um, the last thing I want to, I really want to. Mayor just wanted to, to, to dovetail on that. If you go to the chat box, um, Gabby and <laughs> Francis have been adding um, those um, links. And they're right there on the chat. So if, if you just go to the chat, families can can go into there. Yeah, and then the last thing I, I want to mention, and I want to thank you guys for actively doing this, is uh, many years ago, you know, and it doesn't really matter how long ago, but um, the Parks and Recreation Center um, had um, a different user. Um, they were a contractor of ours, and at least in my opinion, and I may be wrong about this, but I got the feeling that a lot of the kids that were being serviced in our facility weren't actually from Tolleson. And it's not that we want to push people away, but the one thing we definitely don't want to do is ignore our own kids. And so, you know, I would talk to kids in the neighborhood and they didn't know, they didn't have any clue what was going on literally down the street at the Parks and Recreation Center. And so when we re-engineered it, improved it, and, you know, sat down and had a conversation, uh, John Paul and his staff have been very intentional in marketing their programs to Tolleson residents. And so... You know, we've seen an uptick in participation, which is a beautiful theme, and we want our kids to be able to have a first-class summer experience, just like the one that they're offering there, and we want them to be aware of it and have an opportunity to register. Now, if there's spaces after that, you know, the more the merrier, as far as I'm concerned, uh, but ultimately, you know, we can't market the entire Southwest Valley and not market the streets in front of us or to the, you know, or to the left or to the right of our facility. You know, we're Tolleson. This is where it starts. And then we spread our love from the inside out. So John Paul and team, thank you for, for doing that um, and embracing our community like you guys always have. So thank you, Mayor. Rolina, any other comments that you'd like to add? I, there's so many other comments I could just say about Parks and Rec from the evening. I, I've been starting to go into the painting with uh, the muralist, David Murrieta. They have Zumba, they have, oh my gosh. Just go to the website, right? Just log in and register, and then you'll see the plethora of things that there is available for all ages, not just our 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 our, our young young children. Um, obviously, we want our kids to be super involved this summer. Again, we want to have that uh, continuous growth. Um, but there are things that people can do as a family within the Parks and Rec, so that you know all ages get to love and have that joy that goes in their brains, and the endorphins that come out, and it's just a positive experience. So. Um, I highly recommend everyone go to that Parks and Rec um, website. Like they said, the ladies had put some links already in there um, or just drive down. you got the address there as well. Um, find out what's more to explore 
um, at, within the city of Tulsa and Parks and Rec. That's yeah, it. I completely agree. Um, we're we're talking we're really focusing on youth because it's the summer months, but the reality is uh, it's it's um, I mean the library starts as young as zero to two. And you know, uh, I know uh, my son and my my nephews and a couple of other their friends. They go and do uh, the workout room, and they go and do the open gymnasium. So there's there's activities for all ages in the city. Um, but the focus right now is summer summer schools getting out. So we or schools getting out. So we want to make sure the parents understand what's going on for our kids. Uh, but Florina, you make an excellent point. Whether it's arts and crafts, whether it's sports, there's something for everybody to do. And so please go to their webpage, go to the city webpage and get well informed and more than get well informed, get into participating and get involved. And I think I have to add this because it's just like when a child sees a parent involved, when a child sees a parent reading, he or she will want to read. If a child sees a parent involved in sports or, uh, you know, exercise, then the child learns that that is their, you know, they can be, in, you know, in sports and develop and exercise their body. If a child sees that, you know, parents paint, well, then they become artists and painters. So I, I, I truly want to say that as the parents and communities, you are that role model. And so if you do, your children will as well. And so that's the beauty of having these types of programs so that, you know, everyone can. I, I just needed to say that. Sorry, Mayor. Sorry. It's, it's very, it's a very important point, and it's very true. You know, uh, as parents, we're the models, and so we want to make sure that we're, we're showing them good, good behaviors, and we're involved in good activities, positive activities, and, you know, down the road, um, they're going to want to do the same thing with their kids. So, uh, great point. Uh, we're going to transition now to the to the taste of Tolleson, uh, but before we do, I want to admit that I learned something today on Zoom. I'm noticing flowers. I'm, I'm noticing hearts. I'm noticing people clapping, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? There's another one. And so I'm like, I got to figure this out. So I click on my reactions tab and guess what I find? Me crying, because now I realize that I know how to do this too. And so when people say really good comments, I can put a little heart, I can do whatever I want now. Emojis are in, Mayor, <laughs> come on. <laughs> well, I had, to, I had to know that they were there to begin with. So um, they're here. And so I am now emoji friendly. Thank you, folks. You taught me something today. So with that, uh, thank everybody, um, everybody from library, everybody from Parks and Rec. We're gonna transition over to Taste of Tolleson. So you guys are more than happy, more than welcome to some of your information. So this is where um, folks, if you're listening right now, uh, this is where you wanna put in, uh, you wanna send us your email address. Um, and so we can put it into the, the spinning wheel. Um, after the Taste of Tolleson, we're actually gonna have some, some uh, giveaways. Um, so you can actually go down to uh, in Rodeo and get yourself some pan dulce or carne or whatever it is that you want to get from there. So um, with that being said, this episode of the Taste of Tolleson is going to focus on a carniceria. And here in town, I believe we have two carnicerias, but this is what this one is going to be carniceria at Rodeo, 9201 West Van, located on 9201 West Van Buren, right across the street from Tolleson Steel. And um, they've been here a very long time. Uh, the owner, as a matter of fact, is a Tolson Wolverine, and uh, and so they're very much vested in our community. And uh, you know, I want to first first and foremost thank them. Oops. I want to first and foremost thank them for allowing us to enter their their business, take the time to interview them. Uh, when I was there, it was the week I think before Easter, and they were they were booming. I mean, everybody was running everywhere. Um, I don't know how many cows they went through, but let me tell you, they sold a lot of carne and a lot of pandulce. But um, without further ado, um, we can um, start uh, putting in the email addresses. I see a bunch of folks putting it in now. If you haven't done yours yet, keep putting them in. And then um, and then uh, our public affairs department, Nico, is going to actually spin the wheel here after the video. So, Nico, you want to cue the video up? Tolleson residents, this is your mayor, Juan F. Rodriguez, and I want to welcome you to the next episode of The Taste of Tolleson. The Taste of Tolleson is a segment where we feature some of the best restaurants and cuisines in our city of Tolleson. Today, we introduce to you Mercado Carniceria y Panaderia El Rodeo, located right here at 9201 West Van Buren Street. 
Let's go inside and take a better look. All right, well, welcome back, everybody. We're inside of El Rodeo. Again, uh, one of the carnicerias here in Tolleson that we're very proud of. I want to introduce everybody to our guest, Rafael Rascón. Rafael, ¿cómo estamos? Uh, great, nice to meet you. Rafael is a co-owner with his brothers of this restaurant, right? Yes. All right, and so, Rafael, tell me a little bit about um, your connection to Tolleson and, and how long you guys have been in business and why you guys chose to. Out of all the places in Arizona, out of the places in the United States, why did you choose Tolleson to open up your carnicería? Okay, so uh, we opened up here in 1996, and uh, our parents, they come from a tiny town in uh, Sonora, Mexico, where uh, they were all involved with uh, with meat. Like, all they knew, that they didn't even have chicken. They weren't uh, familiar with seafood either, or pork. All they just had was beef out there. And uh, so my dad and my uncles, like, they worked in carnicerias in Mexico, out in California, here in Arizona. And then my dad said, you know what, I think I'm ready to to put a business and start doing my own thing. And uh, he had looked around with uh, with his uh, brothers. Uh, they had opened one in uh, in Phoenix, but that one didn't work. And then my dad said, you know what? I like Tallis and I've been around the area a few times and I really like it. So uh, he decided to place it here along with, uh, with some of his uh, relatives as well. Awesome. No, that's great news because uh, we were talking about this earlier. Um, I remember coming here back in the 90s when the place first opened and uh, he was only four years old, five, six years old, and he'd be running around the store doing whatever was needed to get done. So it's a very strong family tradition. And I know a lot of our listeners may, may have lineage back to the state of Sonora. And the state of Sonora has a very strong tradition of carniceros, people that work with beef, people that work with meat. And so it, it wouldn't make sense that a family that comes from that tradition to come to Tolleson and not only explore, but exhibit the great talent that they gotten over the years by opening up a carniceria and servicing the local community. So with that, um, if you had to pick out of all the products, what do you think makes El Rodeo special? Like what are the main products that people come here to get from your, from your store? So our main products, like I said before, we had started with our, with our meat. So uh, we've uh, evolved obviously from uh, meat to pork, seafood. Everything. Uh, yeah, and then we have uh, cooked food. Uh, we sell like uh, on the weekends, uh, menudo. We sell uh, a bunch of carne asada. And then we, uh, we have our bakery as well. Uh, we're, we're standing right here in the back where all the, where all the process goes on. And it's, I should tell the viewers, the reason we're back here in uh, the bakery is because the place is packed. And Rodeo has people in here all the time. And just to clarify, when you say carne asada, can you buy it uh, estilo preparada, fresco y ya cocinado? Or so we have several ways. We have our uh, our cooked steaks. So like uh, we, for the convenience of the customers, we sell the the carne asada by the pound. We also give you grilled onions and jalapenos. And if you want to do the grilling on your, by yourself, we have a uh, popular steaks are ranchera, paleta, diez mil, which is the the chuck rolls, the skirt steaks, and all that. And then uh, you can ask us if you want the it marinated. And the marinated, we actually uh, we own the rights to the seasoning. So it's a oh, nice. yeah. We've had this for for the past easily 18 years, we've had that same seasoning. So what's your, your, your preparada juice? Yes. Nice. Yeah, so we, we get our ingredients, but like our main seasoning, like uh, everything that's, we own the rights to that. So that's that's one thing that makes us unique that uh, above the competition. Well, if you want carne, this is the place to get it. I'll let you on a little secret. I have a big family. And when we have family gatherings, you're looking at 40, 50 people in my backyard. That's a lot of time on the grill, or that's a lot of time hanging out with family and I gotta make a choice. So many times I'll come to a rodeo and I'll just get a couple pounds of meat, some preparada, ready to throw on the grill so you know I can get on the grill and of course we can have some social time there. But the vast majority I already buy prepared. So we just take it out and serve it out there and you know what, when it's time to eat, we're ready to go. Whether you want it fresh off the grill or whether you want it already ready to go, it's all there. So however you like it, they can do it for you here. Just come on in and ask them. How about the pan dulce? Pan dulce, huh? I've tried to lose weight, but I can't. It's a, it's a struggle, but it's really good. Our, our baker's here early in the morning, and then they, they leave pretty late in, in the day. And uh, we have fresh baked bread every day. So how much of your pan dulce do you buy from somewhere else? Uh, well, we, we make it all here. It's all here? Yeah, it's all 100%. here. 100%. Yeah, all from scratch. So my, my grandmother, que en paz descanse, used to call pan dulce la, vitam la vitamina del día. So the vitamin of the day. So every morning she would get her coffee and she'd get her pan dulce 
And that was her breakfast. And she lived to be 94 years old, lived a wonderful life. And I think a lot of that has to do with the quality of the pan dulce and just the opportunity to sit down with her grandkids, like myself, and just share stories and just enjoy a good piece of pan dulce with some cafecito, whether you like it with sugar or crema, however you like it, and just spend that time and, uh, and just really build some really cool memories. But uh, like Mr. Rascon said, all the pan dulce is made here from scratch. The bakers are here, and so you're only gonna get the best of the best when it comes to the carnes, to the pan dulce, to the carne preparada. Um, you haven't talked about the gorditas, the chicharrones you guys got back there. Man. Oh yeah, oh we, <laughs> we make a lot of those, and uh, it's a, uh, all the, the cooked food is uh, baked from, not, not baked, uh, cooked from scratch as well. We, uh, we prioritize on, on having the best quality ingredients. I will tell you the prepared food is really, really good, but um, I always have to tie in some walking time. Um, if you get the chicharrones, you're gonna get traditional, really good chicharrones. And so you might wanna walk it off afterwards. That's all I'm saying. I gave me a pound, we all have a nice dinner, and then we all go walk it off. We walk about a mile or two just to work out some of those chicharrones or carnitas or whatever it is. But it's really good, so it's definitely worth it. So like I said, you've been here since 1996. I've had an opportunity to, to come in here, my mom and dad, my tias, my tios. A lot of folks in Tolleson, but a lot of folks are in the West Valley. So. Uh, first of all, congratulations on your success. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for picking Tallis in the BN. But if you had something to tell your customers over the last, you know, since 1996, what would you want to make sure that they all knew about uh, and all they own about you guys' family uh, dedication to? Well, firstly, we're very thankful for uh, for everyone that comes out here all the time. We see uh, many faces every single day. Many customers that even come several times daily, if not weekly, but uh, we see them very often. I've seen you since I was a young child working the register, so really thankful for that. And um, yeah, we're just, just thankful for everyone coming out here and supporting us. And uh, I just had my first child. Uh, he's uh, three months old, so I'm proud to, Congratulations, to say that I'm going to raise him here at the store as well. Awesome. Yeah, so I was, I've been here since I was four, so my child is going to get to experience as well. Sí, la there's, there's always been a, uh, we've evolved, expanded our store as much as, as, much as we can. And I can't wait to see what's in store for him as well. That's going to be awesome. That's going to be awesome. So everybody, when you get a chance, they're located at? Uh, 9201 West Van Buren Street. 9201 West Van Buren Street, basically 92nd Avenue and Van Buren, right here in downtown Tolleson. Come on down, look around, buy some stuff, taste it, and I guarantee you, you're not going to be disappointed. You're going to want to continue to come back. So um, what we're going to do next is we're actually going to take Mr. Dascon and he's gonna tour us throughout the store and highlight certain things that he wants to make sure that all of you guys know is available here at the store. So this is where we get started in our, in our bakery. We're open uh, 365 a year and our breads are baked daily here. Uh, right now it's pretty empty because uh, it's raining, but also it's uh, we we just got packed, so we had to fit in some space for the for the recording. And uh, we have our, our donuts, we have our, our cochitos, our empanadas are like uh, turnovers. We have pumpkin, pineapple, apple, and um, cupcakes back here. We have our, our carts of uh, conchitas, so we have a pretty good variety of bread every day. Okay, next we have here our, uh, our produce case. Uh, we get our produce delivered daily, and um, we're just focusing on, on getting uh, new vegetables every day because uh, better to have fresh products. Our long uh, display case where we have a variety. We have uh, dairy products, our uh, cheeses, um, chicken, pork, uh, beef, seafood. And, um, and here we have our popular chicken fajitas. This is the boneless leg quarter. And uh, that one, it, it comes in pretty big uh, slabs to put on the grill. Uh, we have our, uh, our butterfly uh, chicken breast. And here we have our uh, pork products that uh, we also prepare our own uh, adobo or seasoning for it. So this is al pastor, uh, chorizo. We have a chorizo and sausage for uh, grilling. And down here we have other pork products. But this is uh, my favorite personal because I'm a big uh, meat eater. We have all our products here for grilling. So we have the shoulder cloths, the chuck rolls, the rancheras, the one we talked about earlier. That one is a, is a huge seller here. Uh, we have our rub marinated uh, beef short ribs. And then we also, uh, we're gonna show you how we prepare the meat. So when you come asking here uh, for meat, 
you can ask them, hey, uh, I want meat for so many people, or I want this many pounds of meat, and then they'll uh, they'll serve it to you in a bag. They'll ask if you would like that meat to be prepared. We say yes, and then uh, they'll prepare it in the juice. So we're about to show you that in a bit. Omar. And we focus on carrying uh, choice and higher steaks, so really good quality. And, th and this one right now that he's serving, it's actually a black Angus choice, so really good quality meat. And that's our uh, seasoning that we were talking about earlier. He's mixing it there to make sure we get all the, all the flavor. And then we let the meat sit for half an hour to an hour, and it's ready to go. And then you just go to the up to the counter and take care of it, and this is all. So just let it sit for like half an hour to an hour, ready to go. All right, and right here we have our carne asada that we were talking about earlier, and uh, we sell it by the pound. So dame dos liras, por favor. Freshly grilled daily. And then we also serve it with uh, with some grilled onions and uh, jalapenos. Thank you very much, Mr. Rascón. Muchas gracias. Right, thank you very much. Congratulations on your child, man. Thank you. All right, folks, are we back? Yeah, we're back. So just so everybody knows, all the Taste of Tolleson videos, all the Tolleson Talk videos, and a couple of other videos are all on our city webpage. And they're also on YouTube. So if, uh, in the case of Mr. Rascón, um, it made it real easy for him to talk to his uh, family and other members of, of his family that still live in Sonora and say, hey, get on YouTube. You know, they're highlighting a restaurant here and uh, along with all the other ones. So it's, it's a place of enjoyment, not only for our community, but also a place where families can look at you know where their where their families have been able to succeed and uh, and advance advance uh, advance themselves. So it's a you know, really cool point of pride. But anyways, um, I made the mistake of not eating earlier, knowing that I was going to be here. And after watching that video, I am not starving. I'm super starving. So um, if you guys want more information about it, uh, don't call anybody. Just show up. I'm telling you, you can't walk into a rodeo and not want to walk out with something. Um, pan dulce, while I was there, he gave me a new pan dulce they came up with. Um, it's stuffed with cheese and jalapeno. And it had just come out of the oven and it was like super soft. And oh my goodness. So I'm delicious. Gonna, had that. Oh, yes. I'm not going to say I had four of them, but I had a number of them and they were great. And every time that, that they would show a picture of the conchas, I just see Francis's eyes on the screen going. So I'm going to guess the conchas are your favorite, Francis? Okay, my kids are piggy pigs. Yeah, they cochitos. Love, yeah, the cochitos. They love the cochitos. But they have something for everybody. Um, just go down there. I promise you. Anytime that people find out that I live in Tolleson uh, or that I'm the mayor, oh, I like going down to Tolleson all the time. Oh, yeah, for what? I always go by my carne at Rodeo. And they can be from Surprise or Peoria or from South Phoenix. And so, you know, that's that's pretty awesome when, you can, when you've created a tradition that really transcends through the entire West Valley. So again, Rafael, Mr. Rascón, muchas gracias a ti a tu familia for uh, allowing us to, to enter your business and uh, introducing us to everything that you guys do. And <coughs> excuse Mayor, me. Mayor, I'd also know that they'll do special orders. So if um, our old school had an event where we needed conchitas, we were doing it under the sea and we wanted the seashells, uh, I think we needed 500 and they were able to fulfill it in, you know, certain size, a certain color. So um, it's an awesome, awesome restaurant that allows us to, you know, make even specialty orders. Yeah, give them some time. Uh, Rafa yes, really give them time. Like working with the community and doing special orders, especially working with the schools and, and such. Um, and, uh, and, and he, you know, he'll be more than happy to try to do whatever he can to, to help us out. Like I said, he's a former Wolverine, grew up here in town, most of the time inside the country city. Yeah, but, you know, great friend and uh, quite frankly the whole family has been really good to our town and so you know any business that we can bring to them I think is a win-win for everybody so Karina thank you for bringing that up so with no further ado I've seen a bunch of emails coming in so Nico were you able to put all the all the emails in Mayor I'm putting everybody's name on that's um, on the attendee <coughs> I had to remove some 
uh, as you know, uh, you got to be present to win. And I believe I have everybody. So if you are selected a winner, please, please, uh, I'll add your email address or phone number in the chat so we can have a way to get a hold of you. If not, we can't get a hold of you. If for whatever reason you won and the phone number is wrong or the email is wrong and we can't get a hold of you, just reach out to uh, the city, call us and ask for somebody in public affairs, or you can uh, send an email to publicaffairs at policeman.az.gov. Yeah, just know that if you don't get yours, because you didn't submit your, your phone number, I get to keep it. And uh, I will go use it for pan dulces. So please, if you're selected, uh, put in your phone number, your name, and so that you make sure that you get your gift certificate. All right, let's spin the wheel. This first winner, I think, is for $25. And um, it looks like uh, she barely won. It was about to flip to the next name, but luckily it was still there. So, uh, Nico, is the next one for $25 as well? Yes, $25. So it's going to be $25, $25, and the last, I believe, is a $50 gift to begin. Yes, ma'am. All right, so let's go ahead and do the next $25. Breaker. Sabrina G, you are a very lucky person. That was like right there in the last second of jump. I promise I have no influence on this wheel. It does whatever it wants. So uh, Sabrina, congratulations. And what we're going to do next is <coughs> um, the $50 gift certificate. Best of luck to everybody. Third winner is Joel. Now, in case you did, you guys didn't hear it, you need to input your name and phone number into the chat option so that staff can contact you and make arrangements to get you your gift certificate or be present here at City Hall when you come in to get it. So I've only seen, Sabrina, I got your information. Um, Joel, Joel, we got yours. And uh, who was the first winner? First winner was Carmen G, but I believe I have her email in the chat. Okay, so we're good to go then? Uh, we got Carmen. Uh, Sylvia put in her phone number. And yeah. Joel, I believe I, unless unless you see his information on here, I don't see it. Yeah, it's uh, Joel, uh, he's, he's here. And he's got it. a phone number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Joel, Joel Lucio. I'm not going to say his phone number aloud, but his phone number is there. Okay. Uh, so I, think I think email address. All right. So we got three winners. Congratulations to all three. We got your information. So you you will be getting your pan dulce. And um, I can't I can't say how many times pan dulces came up in uh, in the chat options throughout the presentation. So clearly there's something there that you have to go and get. Um, so with that, um, again, I want to thank um, El Rodeo, El Carniceria, and Paraderia. Uh, Mr. Dascon for his hospitality. I want to thank our Parks and Recreation team for coming on tonight and helping us out. I want to thank our library folks for coming out and helping us out. And of course, I want to thank uh, my co-host and uh, co-worker, uh, Councilwoman uh, Corinda Rivas for all she does for us. And uh, a Public Affairs, uh, Nico in the background, taking care of us, making sure the, the spinning wheel does not get stuck. So, um, with any further ado, uh, Corinda, do you want to add anything else before we, we thank everybody? Uh, no, I just want to echo your um, sentiments. Thank you, everyone. And uh, see you at the Carniceria in a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, so with that, folks, um, 
I have a little bit of a cough, so uh, excuse me if I've been coughing throughout the presentation, but um, we got through it, which is great. All the presentation was, was out there. Uh, the information is available on the internet. It's also available on paper uh, here at City Hall and at the Parks and Recreation Center. And more information will be forthcoming as the summer uh, months get closer. So uh, with that being said, thank you, everybody. Paulison, thank you for your time. Thank you for your support. And we will see you around, folks. Have a wonderful evening. Good night. Thank you, everyone, again. Thank you. Good night.